The Vietnam War was a long, costly and divisive conflict. Thousands of lives were lost. And in addition, people were destroyed physically and emotionally. It took a heavy toll. Beginning in 1954 and lasting 19 years, the Vietnam War spread through South and North Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos, until finally coming to an end in April 1975 with the North Vietnamese victory. The conflict involved over one and a half million troops from South Vietnam, the United States, South Korea, and also including Australia and New Zealand and others. The human cost of the war was enormous with over three million deaths, countless wounded, and over two million refugees. In September 1967, John Johnson and his army unit, the 25th Infantry Division, was landing in Vietnam during the war. Before long, Johnson came down with a mysterious respiratory ailment and ended up in the army hospital. Johnson felt sorry for himself and kept hoping that he was sick enough to be sent to Japan to recover, or maybe even all the way back home to the States. But he soon recovered and found himself trudging back to his unit in the war zone. He suddenly realised that this was one circumstance that he couldn't get out of. Johnson had to decide if he was going to be a victim or whether he was going to create his own positive destiny with the power of his mind, his will and enthusiasm. He made a discovery that changed his life. Johnson found that by changing his attitude and choosing to bring the power of willingness and enthusiasm to whatever confronted him and reaching out for support from God, he could move forward confidently. The famous 19th century American philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson, also realised the power of enthusiasm when he said, nothing great is ever achieved without enthusiasm. Yes, enthusiasm, achievement and success go hand in hand, but it's enthusiasm that always comes first. Enthusiasm inspires confidence, increases vitality, raises morale and builds loyalty. Enthusiasm is also contagious and it's priceless. If you think about it, you realise that you can feel enthusiasm by the way a person talks, walks and acts. You may remember some enthusiastic people you've met in your life. They are the people who seem to have more interest, passion and focus. In fact, they seem to be unstoppable. Others like to be around these enthusiastic people because they are upbeat, generate energy and increase the desire to be successful with their positive, can-do attitude. So even when we face countless challenges, a positive attitude, a willingness to achieve and enthusiasm can make a difference. Join me as we find out more about how enthusiasm is a habit that anyone can practice and change their life. Charles Schwab, a wealthy and influential steel industrialist, was earning a salary of a million dollars a year in the late 1800s. When he was asked if he was being paid such a high salary because of his exceptional ability to produce steel, Schwab replied, I consider my ability to arouse enthusiasm among the men the greatest asset I possess and the way to develop the best that is in a man is by appreciation and encouragement. Enthusiasm generates a positive attitude. It helps us to look for solutions to problems, to see the opportunity in a challenge, 
and to perform a task with energy, interest and vitality. Enthusiastic people are far more likely to succeed in accomplishing a task because they believe in what they are doing despite the pressures around them. So let's find out more about enthusiasm. Today, I have a special guest with me who has extensively researched the topic of enthusiasm. Don McIntosh has worked as a trauma nurse, a minister, a counsellor and as a teacher, empowering people from all walks of life to discover their potential and take charge of their future through the Nedley Depression and Anxiety Recovery Program. Don McIntosh, it's a pleasure to have you on our program today. We're talking about enthusiasm. What is it? Well, enthusiasm is this intense excitement and joy. It's forward-looking. It's, it's, it gives you pep in your step, spunk in your trunk. Your eyes are popping, your jaws dropping. You're, 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 you're engaged. You're focused. That's what enthusiasm is. How can enthusiasm mold or remold our brains? Well, you know, they've studied this. They've looked at someone who's enthusiastic and they've done what they call functional magnetic resonance imaging, you know, MRIs. And they can actually see what areas of the brain light up when you have a positive attitude, when you have enthusiasm. And they know it's all related to the prefrontal cortex, different aspects of it. In fact, they've looked at six different areas if I recall correctly, and all these things kind of light up like a Christmas tree. And when that happens, actually your brain remolds itself. It organizes itself around that enthusiastic thought or that action. What is the exercise connection for enthusiasm? Well, the exercise connection for enthusiasm is, it's very interesting. They have studied people that really are not that enthusiastic. But if they can get them out walking, if they can get them out exercising, something happens. They seem to wake up, they have more vitality, they have more optimism, they have more enthusiasm, and they've done this numerous times. So um, actually, exercise is kind of the seedbed of enthusiasm. When you go out, when you hike, when you walk, when you jog, when you run, something happens that just lays the foundation for you to be much more um, enthusiastic the rest of the day. How essential is enthusiasm? Enthusiasm is essential for anything. There are researchers that say that without enthusiasm, actually nothing happens. And so it's a key vital element. Without enthusiasm, nothing really is followed through on. And so, you know, they've actually done research with, of course, rats and mice. <laughs> and <clears throat> they've seen that if you get these rats and mice exercising, you get them enthusiastic, their dopamine uh, receptor cells are enhanced and they're able to then follow through on, on many different things. Now, without enthusiasm, nothing really happens in the brain. So, you know, they, they've studied teachers, they've studied others, and unless they can get people thinking um, intrinsically instead of extrinsically, there's real no lasting change. So there has to be something that comes from within, in Enthusiasm. It has to come from the inside out. So it can't be excitement that's from the outside to excite. It has to be enthusiasm. So enthusiasm is intrinsic. You have to own things to really make a difference. So can enthusiasm be learned? Yeah, you know, people ask, is it caught or is it taught? It's kind of both. Um, it can be learned but it really can't be taught by someone who's not enthusiastic. <laughs> so it can be learned, however. They've actually done seminars and teaching of how to be joyful, how to be optimistic, how to be enthusiastic. And then they followed up later and they had various groups that they looked at. But they, they recognized that the group that was actually being taught, the strategies of being enthusiastic, being optimistic, they actually did, in fact, improve. So yes, enthusiasm although it can be caught, actually also can be taught. And this is good news. Why is it good news it can be taught? Well, because, you know, enthusiasm lays, lays the foundation for helping people, for instance, recover from depression, anxiety. Maybe you get down in, in a pit, in a hole, and you, you have no enthusiasm, you know, have no zest, no vitality. And so, you know, how, how, can, how can you come out of that? Well, if you put yourself in an environment with people that are enthusiastic, and we're gonna come back to this later, 
where does that really come from, then things radically can change. And I'll give some examples later of how that happened, where I saw it clinically myself, and then others, uh, maybe common stories some of us know about. What is the impact of enthusiasm? Well, enthusiasm is kind of a game changer. If you have a teacher who's enthusiastic, it can change the entire classroom. Have you ever gone into a classroom that was just completely dead, but then you had an enthusiastic presentation, and pretty soon people, they, they were waking up, things were happening. Or have you ever been to maybe a, you know, a lecture where someone just is a live wire, they bring everyone alive. Or maybe you've attended a church service where there's a pastor who's just uh, you know, on fire. Things just change. So, you know, I give you some examples. When I was uh, working in a, in a hospital years ago, there was a lady that saw me. She goes, you are an enthusiastic chap. I would like you to come and work with my ailing father, and I, I want him to stay alive until the holidays, until Thanksgiving time. And I said, well, uh, you know, uh, that'd be great. I'll come over. And I went over, and I really needed a job, so I wanted this man to stay alive, maybe for the wrong reasons, but I wanted him to stay alive. And I said, what, what is it that motivates this guy? What is it that makes him, I didn't know the, even the word then in this context, but what makes him intrinsically motivated? What makes him enthusiastic? And I could find nothing. He was just laying there. There was nothing going on. And then I noticed one day there was the television on, and there was this man there whose name was, uh, I think it was Harry Carey or something like this, and he sang a song before a baseball game here, Take Me Out to the Ballpark. He was singing that. And everybody would start cheering, and they would, they would love. Now, this team that he was following, they always lost. But just because of the way he sang and just because of the way he was, people would watch this team. I mean, and they, they would watch them for years. They were fans just because of this enthusiastic broadcaster. So this guy, I see him, and he's watching. He, he hears that come on. He goes, oh, that, my team's on. And he sat up. He started, he started rolling over towards that. And I said, that's it. This is the intrinsic motivator. This is, his, this is his button for enthusiasm. So I began to move that television set to wherever I wanted him to look. If I wanted him to roll over, I moved it to the other side of the bed. And so he would look. Then I moved it back. Pretty soon his sores started getting better on his back. Then I said, man, this is, this is great, but I need him to be able to get up. So I, he went to sleep once, and I moved the television down the hall. He wakes up. He goes, where are the, where, the Cubs are on? Where are they? I said, they're down the hall. He says, I got to get up. So he gets up. I get him in the wheelchair. Pretty soon, I'm getting him up in the wheelchair. I'm taking him down the hall. He's, he's sitting in the other room. And the difference was enthusiasm. He had seen, you know, this motivational, he had this motivational broadcaster and that enthusiasm of that broadcaster, even though the team was terrible, led him to do things he wouldn't have otherwise done. And he actually lived several years after that. Enthusiasm turned things around. It was a great impact. How can we learn to be more enthusiastic? It, it can, in fact, be learned. And usually it is learned by being around people that are enthusiastic. And let me give you an example from studies that they did on teachers. They have discovered that students who are in classrooms where the teachers are enthusiastic are more engaged, they do better with their grades, and they have far less cheating. They've actually discovered that, um, you know, the more enthusiastic the, the teacher is, the more they remember concepts, but they also don't even want to cheat when they come to the test because they have this bond. They don't want to let the teacher down. So it's in those environments that you begin to, your, your, your brain has changed, you, you, you gain information, but you're actually learning how to be enthusiastic. Uh, there's a great video clip sometimes I show when I'm teaching this of a teacher who comes into a classroom, no one's listening at all, and then he begins to say something, someone listens, and then he magnifies that, and pretty soon everybody's engaged, and he starts to move his body around and different things, and pretty soon everybody's just focused on him, and everybody gets involved except for one student. And then he goes over to that student, and even that student becomes engaged. And so there's this cascade of enthusiastic you know, influence and confluence and unity that comes. So, yes, it can be learned, and it's usually learned by watching someone. Um, now, the word enthusiasm itself, we gave one definition, and one definition was, you know, this vitality and optimism, this forward-looking kind of, kind of movement, but another uh, 
actually more accurate definition of enthusiasm is in theos. It means actually God within. And I want to suggest that if God gets inside you, he can teach you things. You can learn things you never learned before. What are the spiritual aspects of enthusiasm? So enthusiasm, again, that word comes from two Greek words, in, which means inside, theos, God within. So have you ever noticed that very religious or spiritual organizations are usually very enthusiastic? Whether or not you agree with them, very enthusiastic. Like, I mean, let's use some, some examples that might make us shudder a bit, like ISIS or Al-Qaeda. When you watch tapes of them, you know, maybe on the nightly news or whatever, you don't get the sense that they're not enthusiastic about what they're doing, you know. They're very into it. And around the world, you'll notice that people that are very highly into their religion, and by the way, religion, although in some parts of the world seems to be diminishing, and actually most parts of the world is growing rapidly. And these are very enthusiastic people. Now, you look at cultures where they have lost their religious focus, um, their spiritual focus, not as really enthusiastic, maybe at a sports game, but nowhere else, not as enthusiastic, much more depression, much more anxiety, I work part of the year sometimes in, in Scandinavian countries, and they, uh, they, they have a lot of depression. They have a lot of anxiety. Uh, but this seems to have skyrocketed as they've gone away from their religious bearings. In fact, a number of years ago in one of these countries, they said, you know what? We have all this influx of people that are very almost militant in enthusiasm about their religion, but we don't seem to have any answer. We're not as excited about anything. So guess what they did in this country? they decided to print a new translation of the Bible for the entire country. And so they print a new translation of the Bible for the entire country. They give it to everybody. It's very affluent, you know, so they can afford to do this. And nobody wants to read it. So guess what they did? They brought the Bibles back. They said, let's put new covers on them. We're going to put covers of the bad girls of the Bible. So they're scantily closed, but there's like, you know, the prostitutes like Rahab and other things on the front, and then all the stories throughout the Bible that were actually pretty interesting. If you actually crack the Bible, it's actually fairly interesting because it has very radical stories. And so they, they put pictures about those. And their attempt was to say, hey, get back to your spiritual roots. Get back to the things that really enthuse you. Because without enthusiasm, it seems like nothing happens. Uh, another area, for instance, science. Science did not develop in, in what we used to call pagan cultures, really, that much, where there were multiple gods. It seems as though there's a real focus when there's just one deity. And in Judeo-Christian culture, this is where science developed. It's in that context that science developed. I'm reading a fascinating book right now called uh, The Bible, Protestantism, and the Rise of Natural Science. But people got enthusiastic about the Bible and everything in that, and that led to the scientific, scientific revolution, actually. We sometimes forget about that today. So there is a real spiritual connection with in theos, you know, God within. I'll give you another example of this. You know, there was a time in history in Great Britain where they had what was called the enthusiasts. And enthusiasts were those who were so enthusiastic about God, they couldn't help but tell. One of these guys was a guy named George Whitfield. George Whitfield was a very famous preacher. He was a contemporary of the Wesley brothers. And he came to America and he preached all through America, you know, various locations, sometimes 5,000 people, sometimes 25,000 people. And he would preach with such vigor and such gusto that crowds would just come and they'd be spellbound for, for however long he preached. It might be an hour, it might be two hours. And every single thing he said just kind of gripped their attention. Now, there was a guy in American history, his name was Ben Franklin. He was kind of a deist, actually, maybe not even that, a skeptic, a rationalist, but he loved to hear Whitfield preach. So he went one day to hear Whitfield priest, the enthusiast, right? So he was very enthusiastic about what he was preaching. And that doesn't mean that it was contrived. I might say probably it was literally in theos, God within him. He was actuated by, a, by the Holy Spirit, you might say. And he was preaching. And Benjamin Franklin came and he said, you know, 
when I go, I know he's going to ask for a collection. I don't want to give any money to him. So he had in his he had in his pocket some copper coins and he had some silver coins and he had some gold coins. And he began to listen to Whitfield preach. And something strangely changed in his heart, in his in his mind as he was listening. And so sure enough, he calls for he knew he was going to call for a collection. He said, when he calls for it, I'm going to just give him the copper coins. At first, he wasn't going to give anything, but he says, I'll give the copper. Secondly, he said, after he heard just a couple more lines, he goes, no, I got to give the silver coins. This is too good. Finally, he, sh he ends with an appeal. He says, look, I'm giving everything. And he gave not only the copper, he gave the silver, and he gave the, co he gave the gold. And more than that, when he left and he began to write about it, he says, you know, it's not just his enthusiastic preaching. I don't know if he used the word enthusiast, enthusiastic preaching, but he was called an enthusiast. It wasn't just that. Look at what's happened in our city. The taverns are closed. Marriages are coming together. The entire society is changing because of this enthusiastic preaching that leads other people to become enthusiastic. People were singing in the streets. You know, and they were singing hymns. They were singing psalms. Something changed. There was something transformed in the community just because of that spiritual, you might say, enthusiasm. Do you have a special message for us today? Well, you know, enthusiasm can be looked at just through the lens of, of maybe a secular lens. I need to exercise more. I need to be around enthusiastic people and all those different things. But, you know, this last concept that I gave you in terms of the spiritual aspect, I think, that's, I think that's what we need to really reconsider. All the cultures that have lost their kind of grip on God, they start to just lose their focus as a culture, as a nation. They become ripe for, for, for others that come in that have enthusiasm. So look, in my own life, I lost all that. But as I came back, as I came back from an atheist mindset, 10, 10, 11 years in an atheist, depressed, anxious, and everything, as I came back and I considered the spiritual, just for myself, not for someone else, that's what had turned me off before. But when I looked at it for myself, man, it totally changed my life. God came within. I became in theos, enthusiastic. And now it's just great to see people's lives change through the power of enthusiasm. Don McIntosh, thank you for being with us today. It's been a pleasure to have you on our program. You're welcome. Enthusiasm sure can make a difference in our lives. But having enthusiasm for what you are doing does not mean you won't face challenges or difficulties. The fact of the matter is that we all face challenges in life. But if you have a positive attitude, then you are better equipped to deal with all the problems that arise. Your enthusiastic attitude will also leave a lasting impression on those around you. It demonstrates how your positive attitude helps you to overcome obstacles, to see problems as an opportunity, to work towards a solution, and leaves a legacy of a life well lived. Many successful and famous people have recognized the power of enthusiasm. And I'd like to share with you some of their comments on enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is contagious. Enthusiasm is the most important thing in life. Enthusiasm is excitement with inspiration, motivation, and a pinch of creativity. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Act enthusiastic and you will be enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is the greatest asset in the world. It beats money, power, and influence. Those who are fired with an enthusiastic idea and who allow it to take hold and dominate their thoughts find that new worlds open for them. As long as enthusiasm holds out, so will new opportunities. Our Creator God wants us to enjoy a life that is filled with joy and boundless opportunities. It changes a mediocre life to one filled with purpose and meaning. Listen to what the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 10. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. God wants us 
to experience the very best in life. He wants us to experience an abundant life. Enthusiasm is an extremely powerful quality that can bring a sense of purpose and meaning into our lives. God has wired you for a life of purpose. If you would like to experience the abundant life with enthusiasm that God created you to enjoy, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our incredible journey viewers today. It's a booklet called How to Harness Your Enthusiasm. This booklet will share with you how to make the choice to be enthusiastic and how it can change your attitude and your life. This booklet is our gift to you and is absolutely free. I guarantee there are no costs or obligations whatsoever. So make the most of this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Phone or text us at 0436 333 55 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website tij.tv to request today's free offer and we'll send it to you totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at GPO Box 274, Sydney, New South Wales, 2001, Australia or PO Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241, New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. If you've enjoyed today's program on the power of enthusiasm and our reflections on how it can change our choices, attitudes and life, then be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together. Until then, let's pray and ask for God's blessing on each of us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the way your love can give our lives meaning how it can give us a purpose and show us the way forward. We pray that you'll give us the power to choose a positive attitude and to be enthusiastic in all that we do and have an abundant life. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen.